How's it going, guys? It is 3.01 a.m., 28th of April, Friday here in Japan. We have a difficult question for renal for pathology step one, okay? Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. really appreciate it. Give me a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Not start the clip. 35-year-old woman, one-week history of dark urine and worsening periorbital edema, diffuse joint pain. Physical examination shows an oral ulcer. Laboratory studies show creatinine 3.2 milligrams per deciliter, normal range 0.7 to 1.2. Once you've hit a creatinine of 2, you've lost 90% of your renal function. BUN 54 should be under 20. Urine dipstick shows 2 plus blood, 2 plus protein. Platelets are 50,000 per microliter, normal range 150 to 450,000, which the following is most likely to be seen as patient. And we have this uh, biopsy of the kidney here, which you do not need to know. I just threw this into the question to be unresounding asshole. However, this image I jacked off Wikipedia. Okay. So let's just whip to the answer choices here. Choice A, diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. Correct answer. Diagnosis is lupus nephritis. Now with cutting, cutting through all the bullshit. Okay. This is what you need to know. SLE is the presentation here. Now thrombocytopenia, exceedingly high yield for lupus. Most common presenting feature of lupus is arthritis. So we have the arthritis here, the diffuse joint pain, thrombocytopenia. You get antibodies against hematologic cell lines, such as platelets. You can also get red blood cells, white blood cells down as well, okay? But low platelets here, and then you can get mucositis, which is mouth ulcers. So this, I preface by saying difficult question, all right? If you're studying for 2CK, more medium difficulty, you need to know this is lupus. Step one, it's harder presentation. So arthritis, thrombocytopenia, mouth ulcer, it's lupus. And then you have to know that lupus nephritis, when you have red urine, if you have a nephritic syndrome in the setting of lupus, that's just diffuse proliferative glomerular nephritis. You just have to memorize it. No, you don't need to know this image. Okay, so it's bullshit fucking image here. Just DPGN, that's the answer. Now, some students will get extra pedantic and say, but Michael, can't can SLE cause membranous, just regular membranous glomerular nephritis? It can, but membranous is a nephrotic syndrome. So even if we had membranous glomerulonephritis in the setting of lupus, we wouldn't have blood in the urine if that were the case, okay? It would just be an isolated nephrotic syndrome. So DPGN is the answer on USMLE if you get lupus nephritis pretty much always, okay? It's very buzzy. It's an nephritic syndrome, blood in the urine. You need to know lupus can present with thrombocytopenia and mouth ulcers, and that arthritis is the most common presenting feature. Let's just whip through the other answer choice here. Choice B, lipoid nephrosis, wrong fucking answer. It's just, this is another way of writing minimal change disease, okay? Almost always pediatrics, nephrotic syndrome, that's it. So they can just say, eight-year-old boy has periorbital edema, ascites, pedal edema. They give you no other information. Obviously, it can uh, be following a viral infection, okay? But they can just give you no other info, and the answer is just minimal change disease. So no, no changes on light microscopy. And on electron microscopy, you have effacement of the podocytic foot processes, okay? Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, membranous glomerulonephritis, wrong fucking answer. So as I said, this is a nephrotic center, so you're not going to have blood in the urine. So etiologies are manifold, can be due to drugs such as dapsone, gold salts, sulfonamides, can be due to solid tumors. Uh, of the breast, pancreas as examples, uh, can be due to primary, so antibodies against phospholipase A2 receptor, hepatitis B, okay, so infectious etiologies, autoimmune diseases, I already said lupus, but rheumatoid arthritis as well. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, membrano proliferative gland arthritis, wrong fucking answer. So this will be the answer if we have red urine in the setting of hepatitis C or malignancy, okay? So it's pretty much all you need to know about it. So you don't need to know about OMG, duplication of the base membrane, dense deposits, okay? There's buzzy findings that you can get, pretty much nonsense, okay? Just, it's gonna be the answer if we have a vignette of hepatitis C plus red urine, or there's malignancy plus red urine. That's just membrane proliferative glyphosate. Wrong fucking answer. Choice Z, proliferative glomerulonephritis, wrong fucking answer. So this is just another way of writing PSGN, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, okay? So 
that can strike some students as weird. This is on the newer NBME forms for step one. So they'll just give you an easy vignette of PSGN. And then you're looking for it in the answer choices. You're like, where the fuck is it? And the answer is just proliferative glyanephritis. And if you were to wiki this, you'll see the PSGN article. It says PSGN, AKA proliferative glyanephritis. Okay. So it's just, holy shit, just another way of writing it. You have to be aware of. So type three hypersensitivity, and you need to know that it need not be secondary to strep pyogenes pharyngitis. It can also be due to cutaneous strep, such as erysipelas, cellulitis, impetigo. In this case, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.